Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel, Smith Shake's Custom Baits, Rick Smith Shake here. Um, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Um, and if your name's Thready, <laughs> we're going to be doing exactly what you said, or exactly what you hoped we were going to do. Making lead jig heads and painting them. Although we're not going to paint them today, I'm not going to paint them today. I still need a little more practice with that to get that sweet spot. I don't quite have the, uh, the temperatures right to make, the, to make enough of the paint stick. So. I'm still working with that, but um, I'd also like to offer an apology for being a little bit later than I than I had anticipated, and I had said in the last video on the updates. Um, I had a couple of setbacks on my with my arm with the tendonitis, and and both of them were self-inflicted. Um, I'm right-handed, and the tendonitis is over here in my right upper right arm and shoulder. Um, but I dropped something, and I reached out real quick and grabbed it, caught it. Bad move, Rick. Bad move. <laughs> that sent me back at least a week. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Um, just a reaction, but it was still bad. So, um, but first of all, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the things I purchased for, for doing the lead weights. Um, first thing, the obvious thing is the is the smelter here. Um, and honestly, well, this is a bottom pour smelter. Um, you, you 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 put your mold or your or your, well, I guess if it's, a, if it's an ingot mold, it's still a mold, right? But you just put your mold under here, and I'm going to move this, because this, you know, I'll move that before I, um, before I do the actual pouring, because this, this doesn't really help. I thought it might help to, uh, to line up the, the cavities, but it really doesn't. Uh, it might if I was able to do like this, but then the molds are too long, you can't get them all the way underneath the spout. So we have to come in from the side, which is fine. Um, but um, if I had it to do over, I would have got one that I could just get a ladle and pour it that way. Um, which I have a small ladle coming, and I think it'll, it might be okay. Um, this might get in the way, this, this mechanism here might. Um, but hopefully it doesn't. Um, but if it does, I'll just have to wait a little while and then break down and buy one that doesn't have this. Um, so that's the first thing that I found out that I probably should have um, done a little bit differently. That's the first thing I found. Um, but it seemed like it was a, a nice a nice deal to me. You know, you just you got the bottom pour. It's just it's simple. It's easy. Well, I have a few cavities that are too big for that bottom pour because they the bottom part of the stream that comes out of it doesn't fill the cavity fast enough to prevent wrinkles in the finished product. But the, as long as the mold's nice and warm, it doesn't matter because um, the wrinkles are pretty small, at least for me. If I was going to sell them, I would make darn sure that I have a ladle to dip out and pour. So, but right now we're not we're not gonna, we're not planning on selling. Let's talk about the molds. First thing, I bought three of them, and this one is just your typical round head. Um, and I'll show you these. Uh, you know what? No, we can just do it just like this. How about if we just do it like this? This is just your typical round head mold. And all three of the molds that I got, since I don't know whether this is going to um, this is going to take off or not, <clears throat> I, I bought stuff that I would use. Okay, and, it, and that, that includes the powder paints. I use round head jigs. So this one has seven different sizes in it. Um, and every one of the molds has different sizes. I didn't, I didn't um, order enough different sizes of hooks. So when we when we do an actual pour today, um, I will um, I will not put any hooks in the bottom two in the smallest two cavities because I don't have any that really fit. Uh, but I do have some on the way. Okay, now this one here is the um, the football head jig, um, and these two big cavities here are the are two of the cavities I was talking about. And they don't fill this this contraption here doesn't fill them quite fast enough, um, and that's okay. But we'll, if, it, if they're just for me, I don't mind a few small wrinkles. Um, and then this one is the pill head, like like a like a Tylenol pill, flat side pill. Um, I've read several times over the years that the flat sided jig heads like these are less likely to get hung up in rocks and such. So, since I fish over at Quincy Reservoir, and there's, a, well, they have the dam, but there's all that rip wrap up along the dam, and then there's some scattered rocks throughout the bottom of the lake that people get hung up on. Hopefully, this will prevent that. Or reduce it. 
Okay. Um, as far as the powder paints go, um, I have this hot pink. I use uh, hot pink colored jig heads when I'm fishing for, for uh, crappie. Um, chartreuse. Uh, purple. And black. I use these three colors on, um, like, say, for example, bullet weights for, for when, I'm, when, I, when I have when I Texas rig soft plastics. Uh, I use those three colors. So I only bought colors that I'm already using because I don't want to buy a bunch of stuff that's, that's just going to sit there and, and, doesn't, and it doesn't get used. Now, if people, start, if people were to start ordering jig heads from me, I'd, I'd, I'd expand my colors. And I would probably, sooner rather than later, ex expand my selection of jig heads too. I saw a couple of them that I wanted, but they, but they were out of stock. Um, this thing takes about 20 minutes or so to heat up. Um, so let's give it just a couple more minutes. It uh, looks like it's just about done. Uh, so let's give it just a couple more minutes and we'll be right back when we're ready to start pouring. All right, so I went ahead and I put the hooks in. Okay, and like I said before, I don't have all the right sizes. Um, and I didn't, what I didn't know, being new to this part, is that the hook size is, is stamped or engraved, maybe they machined it, into the, into the aluminum. Uh, so this one has two, two cavities that they should use a four-aught hook, which I have, then a three-aught, which I don't have, but I used another four-aught in this place, and then a two-aught, then a one-aught. I have two-aught hooks, but not one-aught yet. Um, all the hook sizes I went through, I went through and I, and I made a list of all the ones I didn't have and I ordered them. So they should be here, they should be here by the time, uh, hopefully, by the time we do the next video. Okay, but now this one needs a number one and a number two for there, but I don't have those. Okay, so we're just going to leave those empty for now. And then we'll go ahead and close this. And I close this laying down like this so the hooks don't fall out. Okay. All right, there we go. And you can tell that everything's in there right because there's no gaps here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set this under here for now. Nope, you know what, I'm gonna leave it laying on the side while I move the camera just a little bit. There we go. Okay, Oops, sorry about that. Oh, and some, and some of them fell out. So let me put it back in real quick. Two of the four-out hooks fell out. Shouldn't take but a second or so. This is the one. This is one thing you just got to be. You got to be careful. And I'm hitting the camera. Sorry about that. Let me get this done right here. Out of the way of the camera. Okay. All right. So it looks like we're not going to be able to set these down and, and let go of the handles once you put the hooks in. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna stand on this side of the camera and we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot here. Let's see here. Oops, missed. See, see what I mean? That's not, there we go. There's the first cavity. And if you start doing this, those, um, well, you can see already why, why I wanna, <laughs> why I want the ladle instead okay um, it doesn't take long at all for it to be able to open up these these molds here just look they're already done let's see that there you go okay let's go ahead and get these out of the mold see there's where I missed and I use a I use these these channel locks to drop the larger pieces of the of the lead that are extra back into the pot so they melt. All right, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera position here. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take the sprue and this overpour off of the jig head. And what I've been doing, and this, and, I, and maybe there's easier ways to do this, but this is what I've been doing. And that was a lot of overpour, so I'm gonna have to open up my channel locks a little bit. Okay. Grab it just like this. Okay, and then I just grab the jig head and bend it back and forth a few times and off it comes, okay? And we'll take this, oops, sorry about that, hit the, dang it, hit the stand twice now, okay? Sorry about that. Um, these jig heads, the, the, leads, the lead pieces, especially that big one over there on the end, is still pretty warm. 
So, I'm going to bend these off one at a time. All right, there's one. And they, I know they make a set of pliers. Uh, I need to come in a little bit. There we go. Um, they make a set of side cutters um, that are supposed to cut uh, flush. And I might actually get a pair of those, especially if I'm doing, uh, especially if I start doing a lot of these. It'll just make it a lot quicker than this. But for now, if I'm just making for myself, I will. I probably won't ever buy that. Um, Unless I start going through jig heads like there's no tomorrow. There's that one. Okay. Let's do this. Last one here. All right. Oops, let's... Uh, and I always... Let's do something here real quick. When I put stuff like this back into the pot. Um, the first couple times I dropped it in, just by hand, but it kind of splatters when you do that. So now I use the pliers, because I, I'm pretty sure that that it's a, that if, if that splatters out, it's far less painful for the pliers than it is for my hand. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at one of these. Oh, now see here, see now this is another one. These two biggest ones, um, or is this the biggest one? Well, these here, these two here don't really have any wrinkles in them or anything. These pour real nice, okay? Um, underneath that, underneath that horse. You know what? I didn't let you guys see that. Sorry. Let's do it like this. Okay, here we go. My bad. All right. These two here poured real nice. Sorry about that, by the way. Um, well, except it kind of didn't. This one, this one has a defect and. Hopefully when I get the ladle, that'll, that'll get rid of the defect. You see, there's no collar. This collar is missing on this one. And I have that same issue on the large, the largest um, of the football jigs. Um, the, the, the collar never finishes pouring. And I'm guessing that, that once I stop using that bottom pour spot where I can't aim very well, that that'll go away. That issue will go away. So that's why we have a ladle coming, all right? Um, here's here's one of the smaller ones. I mean, they're nice jigs, nice looking jigs. You know, I'm gonna have a fun time fishing with these things. Okay, here's another one of the smaller ones. All right. Now, when it comes to using the hooks, I wouldn't go more than a size or two, either way, of bigger or smaller, on what it says for each cavity. Okay. Now, this one here, this is one I started to talk about. There's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a defect there. You see that? Okay. Um, I don't care personally. Oh, and look, that's not the only defect. We have this here, okay? But you, saw, you saw that it's hard to line up that bottom pour spout. So that's what we learned today. And you know what? I can't wait for that label to get here. It should be here next week, and we'll have we'll have a lot better looking jigs. Um, this here should, I, I suspect that, this, that the collars will fill properly. Um, that's one thing I've been having difficulty with with this bottom, uh, with this bottom pour deal. Um, so, yeah. All right now next week hopefully next week i'll get some uh before next week comes along i'll get some more practice with the painting of the jigs right and what i've done is i've made a small rack here it's not completed i can pull this completely off um but i'm, I'm thinking of about getting a toaster oven to bake these um this one here you can see it has some of the chartreuse powder paint on I wiped off most of it because it did because it, there just wasn't enough of it on there um, these two here oops almost touched that there might be enough on there but I have to, I'll have to bake these um, but we'll see uh, I'm thinking there probably should be a little bit more than what's on there right now uh, but uh, I'll, do, I'll get some more practice in before next week and uh, and maybe next week the, the rack will be finished too. Who knows? Uh, but I'm not going to finish the rack until I get a toaster oven. I know, and I know how, how big the interior is, um, and that'll determine how wide I can make it this way and how many of these dowels I can put on them. I'm actually going to thinking about going and getting. This is a quarter inch dowel. I'm thinking about going to get a one eighth inch dowel 
for the smaller hook sizes. Because um, I like to do pan, I like to do I like to fish for panfish, bluegill, crappie, that sort of thing, and not not just bass, but I like I like the the, the panfish also, perch, whatever. Um, and I'd be, obviously be using smaller jigs and hooks for those guys. So, with that said. Okay, so that's it for today for our video. Um, next week, like I said, we'll be, hopefully we'll be doing painting in addition to pouring. I'll probably pour, I'm not sure, I'll probably run the other two. Maybe if I have the ladle, I'll pour the, um, the football jigs. If not, we'll do the round heads. <coughs> um, pardon me. Um, yeah, this is, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, uh, you know, I actually had taped this before, recorded this before. I thought I recorded it. I actually talked it all out, and I kind of forgot what I said. <laughs> but I didn't have the record button pushed. <laughs> Dang. Um, so I'm looking through my phone trying to find the, trying to find that segment. Well, it just didn't exist. So, <laughs> I've done that before too, by the way. I had to redo stuff because it just, yeah. Well, I did it again. At least this time it was just the end. It wasn't, yeah, I've, I've missed shots before. I, I thought I hit it and it didn't start. Okay, yeah, whatever. So anyways, <laughs> with all that said, um, I'm looking forward to, to using my own jig heads, the stuff that I make. I, I like I like going fishing with the soft plastics that I use um, because it's fun to fish with the stuff that you've made. Um, and now I get to add jig heads to that mess. Um, and I'm seriously considering couple other molds for spinner baits and buzz baits um, I have a little bit of money left I'll have to see what uh, have to see what I can uh, see what I can come up with um, <clears throat> spinner baits and buzz baits when I when uh, uh, before I start making soft plastics and then I tried to fish with my own stuff all the time uh, my confidence baits for spinner baits and top waters buzz baits were a big part of my top water stuff so, yeah, I kind of wanted to do that first, but I need a smelter to pour the for the for the weight on the on the buzz baits and the, and the spinner baits. Um, so I needed that already anyway. So, so I just went with the jig heads first. <laughs> but the, those will be coming soon, I'm pretty sure, and uh, it'll be just something else I can add to my tackle box that I can use that I made. So, and that's a, that's a ton of fun. If you, if, if you don't make your own stuff then uh, then uh, maybe you should try it. you know maybe it's something or maybe it's maybe you just like watching me make my stuff that's okay too but um, there's a lot of satisfaction in catching fish with stuff you made so I hope to expand my my uh, my arsenal my tackle box as it were is, um, for, 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 for fishing for more types of fish and just doing different kinds of fishing so <clears throat> with that said um, hopefully next week we'll be doing some powder painting and uh, if you liked what you saw hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already um, and hit the little bell the little bell will tell you when we can, when I get a new video up and hopefully I don't wreck my wreck that tendon in my arm again um, at least not anytime soon <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, and share too. And sharing is how we grow, is that right now is the best way to grow the channel. Um, and our and our moms taught us to share, right? At least mine did. <laughs> I'm sure yours did too. So let's listen to them. Do what they said. And uh, hopefully this channel keeps growing. So until next time, folks, tight lines and calm waters. <laughs>